Hey guys, this is Julius from Rocket Records. Um, so basically, you may have come across my podcast or videos or blog. Basically, I'm running a record label in Brighton and um, just started it. And uh, basically, it's going to be this channel is going to be about making money as a band, making money as a record label, and things you can do with Spotify and mod promotion techniques for bands and stuff. So hopefully it'll give you some insights on how to be more profitable with your band. Sorry for the quality of this recording. I'm just recording at home with my cheap Chinese camera. But, you know, hopefully it's okay. So it does say 4K print on it, so you never know. And basically, you may hear with my voice, I do have a thing called through polite text here, which makes me slur a little bit. I've been drinking Jack Daniels at 10.30. I've just have uh, these issues. Sorry, my cat's just um, clawing away at the couch. So basically today, I'm going to talk about the release schedule band should have, and also, you know, how to pitch Spotify with playlists. If you do get on a Spotify playlist, something like cult punk or folk or, you know, political punk, something like that, they can really have a lot of fans listening to it. And not only will you get a lot of plays for that particular song, like you may get a million plays, you know, you'll also get discovered by people who love that genre. So I know I've found a few of my favourite bands by browsing the, um, Kelp punk list and some of the bands you see in that you're like wow why haven't i been listening to those guys they're really good and with the rum jacks for instance like i didn't realize how good they were until you know i'm having to listen to them in that playlist again 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 and then so anyway let's talk about release schedules so back in the old days when records were first produced they were marvel and the thing with the record if you have a record player is you know that they hold about 20 minutes of music per side. So the last thing you want to do when you're putting on a record is have it play one single song and then go to the next track. You know, you've spent time putting it on, so you want to have it play the full thing. And also, they cost a fair bit of money to make, especially these days. So given that you're spending two to three thousand pounds to get them pressed, you want to fill up that 20 minutes of music. So therefore, singles don't really translate well to the medium of vinyl. So as a result, albums became king. So in the 50s and 60s and 70s and things like, albums are king. And nowadays, people still are in that habit. They still use albums all the time, even though they don't really need to. So I think bands should be releasing a new song every four to six weeks. And I've got reasons for thinking that, but that's what I think they should do. And then you should save up all those songs and release them as an album or an EP at the end of the year. So it can work really well. You release songs throughout the year, every four to six weeks, and then towards the end of the year, Christmas, you release an album and everyone buys it. And the good thing about releasing an album is it is easy to buy online. The digital album sales are really good. I think they should be promoted. But I think three of them, every four to six weeks for releases is really good. And the reason it's good will be highlighted in this video. So I'm going to show you how to pitch Spotify with your playlist, or with your songs that are in to get on a playlist. And I'm going to cover off what are the different types of Spotify playlists that you can try to get onto. So stay tuned for the next video where I'll cover why Spotify plays are great and which ones you can get onto for free. So welcome to part two. I'm going to go through Spotify and the playlists you can get on and, you know, their value. 
So I've gone to open Spotify.com. You can see at the top of look the playlist Celtic Punk. So it says playlist um, all the best punk Celt punk tracks covered the Ron Jackson. So it's a picture of the Ron Jackson. And it's by Spotify. That's who's made it. And it's got 269,000 listeners. So up 50 songs goes for two minutes. So you can see they're editing it quite a bit. They edit it every now and then. And if you click favorite or the love art, you see it gets added to my thing on the left there. So, you know, that's good. That's how people follow it. And I wonder if the likes number is. No, it's not that reactive. It wouldn't that be cool if it went up? So let's have a look now at Rum Jacks. Rum Jacks are a band that are really good. So they're a good example. You can have a look at this song, Irish Pub Song, which is really quite good. And that's an older song. And it's got 18 million plays. So that's how many plays it's had since they uploaded it. Now with Spotify, you'll come to learn the plays in this part, in this section, are cumulative. Monthly listeners is kind of your average for the month. You know, so it goes up based on how many people are listening to you, but sometimes it doesn't go up as sharply as your plays do because, you know, the same person will hopefully listen to it more than one song. Whereas monthly listeners is monthly listeners users rather than usage so you can have a look at fistful of roses below that santa millions which is a fairly new song it's only got two million players so even though they've got the same level of success different songs are doing different things and that is because you know of playlists not only on this playlist but they're on other playlists as well so let's have a look at search weekly this every weekly now this will just be in your feed usually weekly in the discover weekly it's actually called so discover weekly is by spotify it's got one like now, don't be put off by that. And your weekly mixtape of fresh music. The thing is, anyone I follow, their new stuff will be shoved into here automatically. So ignore the one like. It's private for me. So just say 10,000 people follow Green Day. And Green Day have a new song coming out. And they release it to their distributor. It'll pop in discover weekly automatically so the good thing is if you release the way i say four to six weeks every time a new song every four to six weeks you're going to get popped into discover weekly for all your fans now it's really good if someone's followed you just because you know they like one song now all of a sudden they like two songs all of a sudden they like three songs all of a sudden they like four songs so you know it can be really good for you so definitely check out that playlist now there are other playlists playlists built by ordinary people such as myself i like building playlists let's have a look at one of the ones i've done this is one of my better ones the best of folk establishing new discoveries so it's a singer somewhere i want and you can email me now the difference is i don't charge almost all the other Players will charge you for placement, so just be really wary to make sure you're actually getting what you deserve. You know, just because you're on this playlist doesn't mean that you know you're going to get millions and millions of plays. And so, make sure it's worthwhile in terms of plays per cost because a lot of people end up spending too much on marketing. All right, I'm going to show you now how to pitch to Spotify. Okay, welcome to part three of this video, and thanks to Nimbus, uh, this record with the Nimbus program, which I think is pretty cool. I'm on the um, 
limited vision, so I've got to do something in five minute bursts. That's all right, keeps me sharp. So you see, I've gone to artist.spotify.com. So you can just type in Spotify for artists. And when you sign with the distributor like Distro Kid or something like that, that will say what's the name of your record label. I would recommend having the name of your record label, even if it's the name of your band. That way it's easier to claim later on saying I am from record label X, you know, but also a distributor like Distro Kid will help you claim your Spotify profile because they know what's good. So you go into Artists for Spotify and now you can have a look at how you're going the last seven days, which is good. Shows you that I've got 2,000 listens. We've got 3,000 streams, so that's pretty good. Go to music. Now, music, you can see Coming of Age, it's total streams, listeners, it's doing pretty well. Now, the reason Coming of Age, you see Coming of Age is killing it compared to Saturday. And that is because it's on way more playlists. It's probably on five or six classic punk playlists, whereas the others aren't. And it's because they're a lot better. So, this is how you pitch music to Spotify. So you've got a song coming out. You release it onto, you know, your aggregator. And you tell them that it's coming out in two weeks. Don't say today. Don't say tomorrow. Say two weeks, 14 days at least. Right? So you say it's coming out in 14 days. Then you go to upcoming. So you see, it will be in this upcoming section if you've known it right. Now, yeah. You don't want to just rely on it being in there because, you know, they'll, they'll get it in the Spotify really fast, like in a matter of days or, you know, even 24 hours. And you don't want that. So say it's coming out in two weeks. Now, you can read this. So when you have unreleased music, you'll find it here. No, expect the gap between that day you upload the music to your distributor. Yeah, not as long as you think when it appears here. It's going to be several days, depending on you, really. And this is where you pitch a song to Spotify that does this for playlist consideration. So you'll see your song here, and you click on it, and it's as simple as submitting it to Spotify. Now, you can, it'll go, go to Spotify, and you can tell them which playlist you think it should go into. So I would include a link to the playlist. And I would also say why it should be in there. So, yeah, just just don't be afraid to write a few paragraphs in support of yourself. So, you know, say something like, oh, I say, Spotify, I really think we should be put in the cult punk playlist. The reason is we're a lot like the Rum Jacks are already in there and doing quite well. We're a cult punk band. We've been around for 10 years. We've got a lot of followers. And we're going to be promoting this song heavily. We love Spotify. We do Spotify advertising. We're getting a lot of plays on Spotify anyway. So all those kind of things is good. Now, the great thing about doing a release schedule every four to six weeks is you've got a chance to win this every four to six weeks. So you're allowed to pitch whenever you want. So you're not allowed to pitch the same song again and again and again, but you are allowed to pitch different songs again 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 so every four to six weeks if you got a new song bang you pitch it bang you pitch it bang you pitch it bang you pitch it and maybe you know two or three times a year you get a song in the playlist and as a result you get an extra million plays you know it's five hundred dollars so it's definitely worth it that's for sure so i recommend spotify for artists it's a really good system so check it out and you know you can add all your bands here and you can have your roster and your teams and stuff like that so if you're an artist you can give access to your label if you want to so someone can be pitching this yeah and um, they should be like if you're releasing music you should be trying to get on thanks a lot guys um that's it for the playlist so as i said do try to follow the schedule if you can and join me back here again um i'm gonna be uh 
talking about distribution in um, 2021 or 22 and basically so what are your options and things for music distribution i've also got multiple podcasts and a record label which i run so check out those things as well but thanks again thanks for joining me and see you soon bye